It's not the things inside my head that keep me going. Don't need someone to throw me money, they should show it. Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me. But Milky, I think come on! Milky, look at your jumper. You warm? Yeah, you look warm. Uh, what's up, YouTube? I'm back. Sorry, I took six or seven weeks off. I'll explain why in just a minute. But first, I just want to attend to this shocking weather, all right? It is the middle of winter in Melbourne at the moment. It's going to be a maximum of 13 degrees Celsius, that is. That's why Millie is wearing a jumper that looks like a little nonna. Hey, nonna! Alright, first things first, I forgot my Nutribullet out at work, so I have to make my breakfast, I just got here now. Oh, so the reason that I took five or six weeks off YouTubing was because I had to go to China for a business trip, so basically I went over there to set up warehousing. Secondly, I went over there to meet my suppliers, went over the entire year's range of products that we're going to be releasing, mapped it out, we went through two rounds of sampling because I was there for an entire month. So that was really productive, I actually went down into the fabric markets, chose out the fabrics that I was going to use, even chose everything down to the little zippers. So I really got hands on with the whole process of designing the clothes, which is really my passion. So I really enjoyed that whole month there. Um, but now I'm back in Melbourne and it is miserable cold. This is life right now. Hey girl. I know. But Uncle Nathan's coming and we're going to be filming an arm session today. He said, uh, oh, here he is right now. No Good warming up. Camera. No Maybe warming up, bro. <laughs> Straight on the camera. Oh, Dad's back. <laughs> oh, Milky, Dad's home. Who's that? Oh, he is. Is that Milky. Daddy? Look at the... <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Hello. So we had a massive conversation, and I feel like going to bed now because my brain is completely f***ing fried <laughs> from all this talking. <laughs> oh, I just want to get warm. So cold. Ha! Ha! Ugh. Nathan just sidestepped through the gym then. <laughs> what are you going to get? <laughs> That was a fast paced walk, bro. Oh, the fat grips. You were so excited to go and get them. I saw him just like power walking, sidestepping through this section here. <laughs> I reckon fat grips mass produce these after I put them on my wall. <laughs> oh, Alright, let's go. I've actually put a few stories up on my Instagram about training and this sort of what I'm going through right now. And um, I feel like this isn't a serious talk, by the way. It sounded like it was going to be a serious talk, but it's not a serious talk. I just feel like, you know those days where you go into the gym and um, you, you just you don't know what to do, you don't know where to start, you don't know what exercise to do. You want to train, but you just can't really put together what to do. Those are the days you get stuck doing the same shit, the same tempos, the same styles, the same exercises. You weren't even recording them, were you? No, I am. Oh, yeah, I was right. just changing the exposure a little bit. Okay, yeah. I'm Less, very, flaws. Less uh, flaws. Yeah, I'm very accurate with what I do. And I, I always feel like I look... Anyway... Yeah, continue. So we got to, before we go into this workout today, we've got to plan what we're going to do. Otherwise, <coughs> fuck man, sometimes I get stuck doing workouts. I'm just super setting 100 movements in one <laughs> and getting nowhere. Because <laughs> I just can't think. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to stop. We're going to think about exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look at our arms and go, okay, this part needs to be hit first. We need to exhaust this part. Then we need to work on this part. Then we're going to superset that with that. And we're going to plan it out. We're going to do who... Fat grip brachialis kills with everything, I, th I reckon, today. Fuck. I'm pretty happy with my brachialis. Yeah, that's but... what I was thinking on the way here. I don't actually want to give you this. Nah. I'm already jealous of your brachialis. <laughs> and I've been, I've been smashing time <clears throat> while you've been on holidays. Yeah. Right? Trying to catch up. To catch up. <laughs> and today I was almost reluctant to bring these in. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to introduce him to the fat grips because then he's going to start using them. Yeah, and then I'm going to fall even further. And I know what you like, bro, because you're going to start... You're gonna have I'm going to make my own. Pretty <laughs> young, active bodies, world's fucking fat grips. <laughs> All right, now start off a workout. What I like to do with most of my clients, what he does them with most of his clients, is what we call the ABW TFM examination technique. Now, what that is, is applying touch to the human body with your hands and visually looking at it with your eyes and seeing and feeling which part of the body lacks the most when the body is flat, not on a pump. So what I want you guys to do is go into the gym, 
have a feel for your body and feel which part of the body needs the most amount of development in the area you guys are trying to work. For example, if you guys are working shoulders, what I want you to do is have a feel of your shoulder, feel which part needs the most amount of development, whether it be the rear part, the side part, or the front part, and that is the part of the shoulder you're going to put most of your emphasis on when you train. Same with your arms. Have a look at your brachialis, the thickness of your arm. Have a look at your bicep peak. Have a look at the swoop, the back part of your tricep, the long head of the tricep. Have a look at the short head of the tricep and work out which part of the arm needs the most amount of development and train your arms in that order. The strongest part of your arm train the least and the weakest part of your arm train the most. It's really that simple. In the end, you'll create proportion, balance and symmetry and an overall more beautiful aesthetic physique. Alright, so we are filming today for the first time in four weeks and because I haven't filmed in front of like a $10,000 Sony camera that films for longer than 10 seconds, I've got to slow down my talking because usually I've got to get out 20 paragraphs in 10 seconds on Instagram. But now we're back to the weekly vlogs. Now, I don't just look at Eddie's, um, Eddie's arm even though we're targeting arms, I'm also going to look at Eddie's shoulder as well. So Eddie, what I'm going to do for here, Eddie's on the side. I lift up Eddie's shirt like this, and right now this is Eddie's, god damn, this is Eddie's arm without a pump, completely flat, hasn't trained yet, he's slept for 80 hours. And what I'm looking at is everything inclusive together. Alright, so, now Eddie's, Eddie's got fantastic proportion, Eddie's got fantastic balance. What I like to do is I like to feel, Jesus, fucking everything's pretty damn good, but um, if I could work anything, Eddie, I can't even fucking work it out, bro. <laughs> You're pretty well balanced, man. <laughs> Usually what we do, now you can refer this to any normal human, look at a body and have a feel of it, if you're, if you're a coach or even for yourself, and feel where you feel the muscle is lacking the most. So usually when I do shoulders, for example, most people lack in the rear part of the shoulder here. So as I come in, I feel the shoulder like this, I can kind of feel a lot more density through here and a lot less through here, which tells me that when the muscle is flat, that's how the muscle is actually developed. When it's pumped, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. So right now, it is perfect, but most people lag on this part of the shoulder. Do that with every muscle group. Today we're doing arms. I can't do it with Eddie because Eddie's arms are, are very, very well balanced. He's got a great tricep swoop through here. The long head of his triceps ties nice and low. It's very thick from the top to the bottom. His short head's nice. His biceps were great from the origin all the way to the insertion. He's got a nice thick brachialis. And these are the sort of things you want to look at when you're training your own arms. Which is lacking the most? Now, a lot of people, I can tell you, a lot, even now at a pro level, a lot of people lack through here, which is the brachialis, which is the thickness of the arm. You can get a great tri uh, bicep peak. You can get a great tricep hang. But what people don't have is that, they, there we go right there. People don't have the thickness of the arm, which is this part right here. And which is why we emphasize the squeeze at the top of the motion, because that puts pressure in here. All right, so today we are starting off with triceps. The reason we are starting off with triceps is because triceps make up 70% of your arm. Now, the first exercise we're gonna be doing is what we always do, which is a cable push down and a tricep straight bar push down just over here. The reason we're doing that, a lot of the time, Eddie and I, we get pain in our, in our elbows if we don't warm up correctly. Yes. So we're gonna start by increasing blood into the muscle, holding the squeeze, slow eccentric, and getting a crazy insane pump. So that when we go and do the big compound movements like skull crushes and dips, and when we start growing the muscle with those movements, our triceps are warm and our joints don't take the load. Nothing too crazy right now. We're just gonna superset the push down like this, holding the squeeze at the bottom, emphasizing the blood, Targeting the long part of the tricep, which is back through here. We'll go into the craziest stuff later on in the workout, but this is just how we're gonna start off. Ensuring you get a full range motion stretch. Watch Eddie's elbow, watch that there. His hands go, his, his, his wrist goes all the way up to get a full stretch all the way down to where his tricep inserts. And when he contracts, he pushes the weight down as hard as he can, and he squeezes all the way up here where his tricep originates. That way we're getting a full stretch, and we're getting a full contraction, which means full muscle belly, full development. And then we're going to superset over here to a tricep push down. Again, because we're just starting the workout off, nothing too crazy. We're not really putting too much salt into it. From the top? Yep. Good. As you can see right there, Eddie's working on the short head of his tricep right here. So the first exercise emphasizing the long head, the second exercise emphasizing the short head. And it's crazy because if you guys didn't hear me narrating this video, you wouldn't actually be able to see what he's doing. But Eddie in his mind, where he's applying his mind is where he's applying the tension. Ah, sickening. Whatever it takes to get the blood in there, that's what we're going to do. And we do no weight as well. Now again, there's no, ten there's no resistance behind this, but what he's doing is he's squeezing his tricep as hard as he possibly can, which is like I said to you guys before, we're, we're putting as much blood as we can to the triceps, 
So when we go and do the heavier, more compound movements, which in turn is going to create the overall mass of the arm, which is what we all want, the right muscles are going to fire. Long head, short head. Long head, short head. There we go. <clears throat> Call me crazy. You guys try that out, that no weight squeeze, right? You try that out and you, you feel the blood in your triceps and then go and do something like a dip or an overhead skull crush with an easy oh, skill bar. That's connected. Man, that, that is, it's going to be crazy. And that's that connected. is when you will grow. That's connected. That's proper connection. That's NBN connection. Fast. Fast, fast, fast. Hang on, it's not on yet. All right. Hang on. I'm not recording yet. Wait one second. I just you are get, recording. No, I just got to get the, the lighting right. You are so recording. Ready? Three. Two, one, and recording. Now we'll look weak because I'm already like 30 reps now. I'm gonna fatigue after what, like six reps now. Okay, what's extremely important is this. This is what, uh, you know what? This is what most people do with triceps. And you probably do it yourself. When everyone does triceps, they start at the top of the motion. Even if you are getting a full range of motion stretch and a full range of motion contraction, the movement isn't good. People yank into the lockout. They go like this and they go like that. That's what I don't want you to do because there's not, a full, there's not a proper contraction. What I want you to do with any tricep movement, it's always soft into the lockout. You can use a bit of speed going down, go down with a bit of, with a bit of power, and then soft into the lockout. Never yank into the lockout. Lockout and hold it for a second with that soft squeeze, and then slowly release it. I, I promise you guys, try this, the slow, try this smooth lockout technique. Man, it makes all the difference. Go down, stop yourself for a second, and smooth into the lockout. Just like that, watch my elbow. Smooth into the lockout. Smooth into the lockout. Even if you just want to sit and do this for a second, just for blood flow. It's, mm. it's unbelievable. It's bro. Okay, this exercise here, what I want you to do, flare your elbows out. Again, soft into the lockout. And what everyone does with ropes is what they do wrong is at the bottom of the motion, they flick their wrist. And it's not about flicking your wrists. It's about opening your arms up as you go down through the movement, keeping your arm, yeah, keeping your wrist straight. So watch this. Everyone does that. Mm. Instead of doing that, do that. See how my wrist aren't flicked and my arms open? <sighs> All right, another thing that is really important when you do this, this is one of the first tips that Nath ever taught me when we're doing this exercise is not to stand too far back from the rope, yeah? Just go back for a couple of seconds, row and show them how most people like lean into it. Oh, and then, yeah, they do that, and then they flick it out in front. And like, yes, that will work, but like we're trying to tell you guys, it's all about the little one to 2% efforts that you can get that little bit more from doing this exercise. It's not about moving heavy weight. It's about feeling the contractions, going through the full range of motion, feeling the muscles stretch, and then pushing the weight back down into that same area that the tension starts to build up when you go through that stretch. There we go. Now, unless you're Eddie Arnold Heath, which is pretty much the same person, <laughs> most people lack in their brachialysis. So what I want you guys to try at home is superset a brachialis hammer curl movement with dumbbells and fat groups together. Every exercise in your arm workout. I'm gonna do that today, Eddie's not. What are we not using? <sighs> Starts with M. <sighs> Momentum. <laughs> the squeeze from the bottom of the motion, a niche contraction of brachialis, come up and hold the contraction at the top of my brachialis, which is in between my bicep and my tricep. <laughs> trying to develop thickness of your arm and which part of your arm you're trying to develop thickness in. I understand bicep originates in your shoulder and inserts into your forearm. So if you're doing anything with a fat group I think which is trying to develop thickness of your arm and you want to develop thickness of your actual bicep, you need to bring your elbow slightly forward. If you're trying to work thickness of your brach or more your brachialis, which is in the middle of your tricep and your bicep, instead of contracting up and bring your elbow forward, you want to come up and bring it all the way backwards. Mm -hmm. You guys try it out. Feel it. So leaning forward is quite good if you're actually trying to hit the forearm. That's why we always do our hammer curls yeah. like that, yeah? Yeah. If you're doing bicep curls, we stand up, bring it up, curl it, hold it, control it back down. Lever through the motion a little bit. 
brake out unless you want to keep it still. You can do this seated too, it's also a very good way to hit it. Especially like if you're on an incline bench, you keep your elbow in that stretched out position and then bang, squeeze up through your forearm. That's how I do it sometimes if I'm doing it at the end of a session. Alright, so Nathan told me that he does not like the fact that Millie's Instagram name says Millie. In case you haven't heard us saying it, we've kind of renamed her Milky. So today, I am going to change her name to Milky underscore active. No longer will there be a Millie active. I'm happy. Milky underscore active. Done. There we go. Make sure you give her a follow. Just become. All right, guys, moving on to our next exercise combination. We just did six sets of that. Progressively overloaded it. Nathan ended up doing the full stack on the very last set. So what we're gonna do now is a compound movement, uh, a dip, and we're gonna superset that with a overhead dumbbell extension. Now this movement is focusing on the eccentric load. So we're just pushing it up to the top, but then focusing on the stretching phase. Now when your muscles under tension and fatigue, that's the best time to focus on the eccentric phase. So that's why we're gonna make sure that we lower it down under a two to three second tempo. So it's a one second up, two to three seconds on the way down. So dips, I don't know, they use a lot of shoulders. We'll just, we'll see how we feel. It's really just dependent on the day. Oh, whoa, 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 it's not bolted down. Now, when we're doing this exercise, if you're trying to hit your triceps, you want to stay upright a little bit more, so. In order to counteract the weight to apply the most amount of resistance to my tricep, I'm going to, keep, I'm going to fold my feet like this and keep my feet in front of my body. The tricep, That's the tricep. Bang, the hitting the chest and the front delts. Frontwards counterweight, tricep. Bang, bang, bang! Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> first set, you know what? For me, the first set, even just body weight, feels 10 times harder than when I strap 20 or 40 kilos on because all the weight does end up kind of getting transferred around into your chest and your shoulders. As soon as you get some weight pulling on your hips, pulling you down, all of a sudden, that weight gets stuck here and your triceps take most of the load. All right. Yeah. I just walked into that dipping machine. Okay, so now with this exercise here, as the superset, like Eddie said earlier on, we're going to be focusing on the eccentric phase. So it is going to help me up when I start fatiguing on the concentric phase. I mean, to let me go, I'm going to leave it nice on the eccentric phase yep. and really load those triceps. All right, ready? Three seconds down, one second up, bang. Full stretch all the way behind the head. Full contraction all the way up. If you don't lock out at the top, it's not the end of the world. Some people just physically can't do it, but push it up as high as you can because that's how you're gonna get the most amount of development and detail through the insertion part of your triceps, which is near the elbow. That's how you get all those ridges and those cuts and those deep, deep striations. Now, as you can see, when he lowers it down, right behind his head, this point here, is where it's taking the load and then bang, squeezing it back up. This is one of my favorite exercises, developing that swoop to your tricep, so the belly of it. See how it sort of hangs down? We'll show it on Nate, show us your swoop. This belly look comes from doing overhead movements with your triceps, so either one arm or two arm overhead movements, cable extensions, whatever it is. That's what stretches that muscle out and that's what I look at in the mirror when I'm doing this exercise. I'm looking at that corner near my sweaty armpit to see that the muscle's getting a full stretch and then locking it out and holding the tension in there. You don't want to just stretch it and then throw it up and then drop it. You has got to squeeze and hold, hold, hold and then release. Probably no bleed cramp still. Is that because of the weak core? I shame my core more. I don't know bro. I don't oh, usually get them. Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell. Show us your core. <laughs> yep. All right, dibs here. Now, as I said earlier on in this video, it's extremely important to start with lighter weight, put blood into the area that you guys are trying to develop, and then go heavier progressively each set, each exercise, especially as you enter the compounds, to grow these muscles. Okay, four strokes, baby. Let's go. Last two. Last two. Let's count them out. One. One more to go. One more. This is it. Everything you got. All right, let's focus on the eccentric loading of an overhead dumbbell. All right, now before we said, oh yeah, you gotta have your legs in front in order to counteract the weight. Legs back if you're trying to do chest. You notice that I was pinching the weight with my legs and my legs were back. However, because I've got 20 kilos hanging from my waist, that's what's bringing my center of gravity forward. So if you've got a weight strapped to you, you can just cross your legs over and pinch the weight with your knees. It's still gonna hit your triceps. 
I want to give the active fam a little bit of a tip on how to get a heavy weight up onto your shoulder. So I've seen people do it like this and nearly kill themselves trying to throw it up. What you do is put your hand underneath the dumbbell, flick it up onto your shoulder like that, then go underneath and push it up. It's the most easiest way. Uh, here we go, feet shoulder width apart, get a nice wide base, and then lower it down really slowly. Two, three, and then stretch. Squeeze hard on the concentric. Three, two, one, right behind your head, bang. So what Eddie's doing right here is using a little bit of momentum to get the weight up, because we're not trying to focus on the concentric phase, which is from here up. We're trying to focus on the eccentric phase, which is from here down. Oh. Using his hips to move the, help move the weight up, not his lower back. He, as you can see, he bends through here. He's bending through here to make sure the weight is in his lower back. We don't want to rupture a disc. We just put the weight in here. Beautiful. So, a lot of people out there are going to be like, oh, you're cheating, you're using your hips to throw it up. It's kind of the whole purpose of it. That's why we're doing it as a second exercise. The muscle's already fatigued. We've already hit the concentric presses on the dips, all right? So now we're just really focusing on that little down phase. So if you're using a little bit of cheat to just throw it up, that's fine. Get it to the top of the motion and then just focus on bringing it down under maximum control. Good. Now, a lot of people teach this exercise with ah. elbows going forwards. That is all right to do, but you can't go as heavy because it's, it's a little bit more dangerous on your joints. I'll explain in a second. Oh, holy shit. Okay, so with that movement now, I understand elbows forward is going to load the triceps more effectively. As we are focusing on the eccentric load, coming back to triceps, whether you have your triceps forwards or outwards, doesn't really matter because if you guys do this, right? and squeeze your tricep. Can you imagine doing this and squeezing your tricep? It just kind of works different parts of your tricep. Try it yourself, do that, and then do that. The, set, the good thing about doing this way, in this particular movement, is that we've just done a big compound movement. Then we came over here, done another exercise. As a safety precaution, we keep our elbows out with this movement because, two, because of two reasons. One, because we're completely exhausted ourselves. And two, because we're focusing on the eccentric load, not the concentric load. I don't know if you guys have heard of this before. This is what you do when you're setting up a Smith machine to make sure it's even so the weight is distributed. Fuck! Contingently <laughs> distributed. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah, bro. Shit, man. This is how we set the bar up on a Smith machine. This is so the weight is evenly distributed on both sides of your body. Come on, push, bro, push! Ugh. All right, here we go. Top of the motion. Look how slow he's lowering it down. This is very important, okay? When you're doing this exercise with the bands, that's the phase of the movement that you want to focus on the most. Now, we've said it like 450 million times this workout. Bang! Blast it up! This is like my ninth rep. Bang, bang, bang! All right, here we go, spot. I'm gonna help Nate on the way up now. Ah! He's just gonna focus on the down phase. Ready? Ah! Here we go. He's lowering it down, he's lowering it down, and we're blasting up together. Ah! Ah, Simultaneously shit. blasting it up. Ah! Two more. Up! Ah! Here we go. Up! Ah! Yep, lock it. Oh, good, bro. Shit. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Alright, focus on oh, the eccentric load. Heavy, bro. Yeah, bro. With bands applied right now, again, like I said before in the last video, well, it's actually one long video, isn't it? But like I said before, eccentric phase is the most anabolic phase of motion of any movement. So focusing nice slow the way down from the top of the motion, make sure, you, make sure you start going slow straight away. Don't drop a little bit and then start going slow. We drive up on the concentric phase, we get to the top, we, we start levering now. That's it, baby. All right, I'm gonna hop a little bit. Now Eddie's gonna recruit a little bit of chest. Just up and down, let's go, up and down, ready? One, two, come on, I've got three more. Three, two more. Four, last one. Push. Milky, come on. Don't look at Baba. Okay, look All right, at here we go, who's your daddy? Go to your daddy. Who's your daddy? Come Milky, on, come. Milky, come, on. come. Oh no, Milky, Milky, come. No. No. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh. You've gotten him confused. Oh, Milky, come. Same for come. Oh, come on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's all over now. She's on the licks. 
She's on the licks. Oh. Alright, so my mid workout. I'm still completely exhausted from that last set. But I think what's going to be really good, the people have been asking, we've got to, we've got to launch these ABW TFM shirts. <clears throat> so Nate just literally said it to me then. Um, when we're working out, you know, we should start designing these t-shirts that we're going to sell on the ABW website. I was like, well, I'll do it right now. You know, we are just talking about before how he comes up with ideas and I just like, I just go for it. You know, I just, I don't think, oh, I'll do it next week or I'll sit down tonight and then I forget to plan it. I said, I'm going to write it down right now. I'm just write it down, design TFM t-shirt, envision plan, execute. And I'm going to sit down and design it as soon as I finish this workout. Mm. And we're going to put it into play. And then... I want you guys though... We're going to start designing this shirt, but we want to hear some feedback. What do you guys want to see on the first ever ABW TFM t-shirt? What do you want to see? What words do you want? Do you want dark zone? Do you want momentum? Do you want envision plan execute? Write it in the comments below. Do you want father son? Father yeah, son. We're gonna, um, I'm going to put some designs together today, and then I'll, um, I'll put up like some polls on my Instagram, Nathan put on his, and we'll let you guys choose. Because I do that a lot with my clothing. I actually like to hear your guys' opinion on what styles you want, what colors, and I actually take a poll and I'll roll with the majority vote. I don't just go based on my own biased opinion on what I like. And I did it with the AP shorts. I did it, I said, what color do you want? And people were telling me, you need to do a black and gold one. Like, that's your colors. And I didn't have black and gold planned. And then so many people said to me that I actually did it. And that has been the hands down number one selling product out of everything that is on the ABW store. We've already sold out of all the black, um, black and gold shorts, which we've just recently restocked. So they'll be landing in two more weeks if you try and buy them. All right, bro. What color do you want to be? Red or blue, Ranger? The red, wait. Red or blue? Wait, man. Oh. Move the red pill, the blue pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The red pill or the blue pill? Oh, bro, I'm too, I'm too wide for this. Go, okay, just pick one, bro, and then give me the other one. So we can't afford to keep mixing up our shakers, so we got elastic bands with colours to differentiate the two. All right, your blue ranger. Yeah, it's heavy. All right, regular kills. Let's go. All right. Pick up the pace now. Okay. Shit. Four hours. Who? Yep. Lying skull crush. What he's doing right now is a focus on the peak of the bicep, not the brachialis. So it's extremely important to one, get a full stretch, two, at the top of the motion, initiate the contraction of the peak of the bicep, not the brachialis part of the bicep or the arm. And then as you're contracting down, bring that bar in front of your forehead just here, just above where your hairline is. Actually, not everyone has a hairline this, this far. And make sure you get a full stretch, hard contraction. Good, we're going to do 10 to 15 reps. The reason we're doing this is because we've hit, again, a lot of the brachialis, a lot of the tricep. So we're now focused on the peak of the bicep. Good, bro. All right. Controlled reps. Let's go. Up and down. One. Just there. Two. Let's go. Three. Let's go. Last four. One. Okay, take it. Oh, jeez. Fuck, my arm's on fire. Oh, God. How am I going to lift this up, bro? Uh, I came in at the end. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, got it when I was... Yeah, got it when I was... I was like, oh, yeah. I got it, bro. You good? Yeah, I'm all right back here, bro. <laughs> 
Uh. Alright guys, that wraps up our arm session for today. Hope you got something from that. Moving forward, we're pretty excited to be working together and now that I'm back in Melbourne, um, we're going to be organising seminars in the next coming months. So, Alright, so um, I put up a status on my Instagram a couple of days ago, Eddie and I training together, and I got a bit of a response through inbox, a few comments, about locations where we may possibly be doing seminars. With these seminars, what we want to cover is not just the educational stuff of bodybuilding, you know, body composition changes, burning fat as energy, all that sort of stuff. We want to touch base on the psychological part of the sport as well. A lot of the reasons people fail and bounce back and forth to dieting, a lot of people follow what's called a yo-yo diet where they will be great on a diet for a month or two then go backwards is because of the psychological part of the sport. So a lot of things like goal setting, success, and what motivates you to get out of bed and reminding yourself of why you started. We want to touch base on a lot of things, but I want to hear from you guys where you guys want to see us, Any, anywhere in the world, it can be China, it can be UK, it can be anywhere you want, anywhere in the world, and what do you guys want to hear about? We're going to be doing work, do you guys want workshops, do you guys want seminars, do you guys want both? In the comments below, hit us up, and we'll get back to you guys as soon as possible with details, when, where, and what we'll be talking about. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video, I think we got enough footage, so hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, you follow along our workouts, and you can get all the information on the upcoming seminars from either of our Instagram stories, so you can also watch those. Alright Active Fam, peace out. Is that how your muscle is, that is how your muscle truly is, the basis of our training. But it's also, man, these thinking pills are good. Yeah, I told ya. They don't cook your brain, they just Shit. like, they just help you find your words. I just grew a brain on my foot or something. Yeah. Well, now anyway. you've got three brains. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking at his shoulder, the front part, the rear part, how it ties in nicely through here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heap of, heap of, heap of, Because fast twist movements uh, activate type 1 muscle fibers. No, that's wrong. Top 2A. You can put that in the bloopers. Yeah. Top two A. Yeah, we all knew that. Shit. Trying to sound smart. Here we Shit. go. Here right. we go, Mr. Mr. Intelligent. Inside. Most intelligent bodybuilder in the world. <laughs> 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 okay, go. <laughs>